All right, good morning. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Good to see you here. Paul Trady. I'm going to dive into Photoshop Masterclass. All about, uh, let me aim this mic slightly toward me a little bit more. Hopefully, you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, getting artistic with portraits. Basically, um, yeah, we're just going to have fun in Photoshop with. Uh, yeah, portraits of people, you call them selfies, whatever you want. I can show you how to uh, make selfies in Photoshop or how Photoshop can actually take photos, at least for um, Macs, if you have an iPhone. I wanna welcome everyone. Again, welcome wherever you may be joining me, just checking everything. Bam, 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 bam. We're in business. All right, Ahmed can hear me. Thoreau, I see you. Marshall, what's up? Uh, uh, cool, Susan, awesome. Fantastic. Ran out of new shirts? No, I do have some new shirts up there, but man, I just sweat through them. I sweat through them when I, like, I'm down in the basement with the lights and the, in my office. It gets super hot. So let's go ahead and switch over to my desktop. And again, I wanna give you a warm welcome. Uh, this is a masterclass, so I don't really have to worry too much about uh, starting with the fundamentals or getting into the basics. I get to just kind of create some fun stuff and you'll be able to uh, learn a lot from what I create. But I do have some different images right in here, as you can see. Right, these are all fantastic portraits, right, that we could have a lot of fun with, which I think is really cool. Um, but we can also take photos directly from Photoshop as well. So you could do this right now if you want to. Um, just go to, uh, right down here, to import from iPhone or iPad, right? And let's launch QuickTime. I'm just gonna do this really fast because if you need a source, this is what I would do. New movie recording. Wait for it. Wait for it. Let's launch my camera. However I do that. There we go. All right, hold on one second. Let's just do a new screen recording. Actually, I kind of want to show you uh, the screen, but hey, if it doesn't show up, that's okay, because all I need to do is go in here, uh, import, let's take a photo right selecting that it's accessing it from my iphone which i have right here and i can go in and take a photo right use photo that's all i was going to show you but here's just a photo that i just took of me so that's what you could start with if you want to do a portrait you can start with something um like this again this was a selfie so this is using the front camera not the best camera on my phone, uh, but uh, it's it might be an okay starting point. But I'm not gonna be that vain as to use a picture of me today. I'm just showing you that capability. So right in here, we could use any number of these photos. Um, hello, Richard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, natural AC, that's right. I just sweat through those shirts. It's hot in here, man. I got all these lights and all this stuff, right? It's kind of wild. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, just kind of start with this picture if we can. So uh, again, really great portrait. This is like fantastic, but we want to treat this in a fun artistic way. Uh, 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 so that's what we want to go ahead and do is use this particular particular picture of this woman, right? So use whichever one you want. Uh, oftentimes I'll duplicate it. So command J, I'll jump it. I'll convert this. Oftentimes I'll convert it to a smart object. And when I say artistic, usually people think filter going into the filter gallery. Well, that's what people will think of doing, right? Which is okay. This is out of the box. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm an, I, this file is so large. I know all the processing is going to take a while. This is like so many, it's just so huge. I'm actually going to size it down if you don't mind. It's just going to go faster, right? Let's do that. Let's do 3000 by 2000. Made about half the size, right? This is just going to make everything go so much faster, but uh, we should have fun today. Uh, <laughs> throw yes 
Yeah, my forehead is always shiny, by the way. I live in Colorado. It's very arid here, right? And uh, yeah, you just gotta moisturize. You gotta moisturize, people. And honestly, you should have diffuser on your lights so you will not get so sweaty like me. And so, sh not really sweaty, but shiny. Uh, so again, moisturize, people. Make sure you're wearing your sunblock. Here's the photo, half the size now. It's gonna run a lot faster. In here, let's remove that chrome. Currently what I have is plastic wrap, as you can see. But obviously up here, we have all these fun, like artistic looks that we can go with. No, I did not dye my hair. You could just ask me, you don't, did Paul dye his hair? You could just say, hey, Paul, did you dye your hair? I'm like right here, okay? Sig, I'm right in front of you. <laughs> so feel free to ask away. No, I have not dyed my hair. If anything, it's a lighting issue, but no. Um, so again, we can kind of go through some of these. Some of these are really gonna be able to help us out, right? We have paint dobs. And what I wanna do is I wanna pick a couple, we'll save them off, and then we'll kind of move from there. But if I pick any one of these, if I like these rough pastels, you know, in general, I, I like this look and let's just increase the stroke length, uh, decrease the, actually no, let's increase the detail. So hopefully everybody's kind of seeing what that does. Now, a big thing with portraits is like, it depends on wh where you're gonna output this because if I output this to Instagram, it's gonna be this size and you're not gonna see any of the texture. So be mindful of what you output it as. Right, so there's my rough pack cells. We have obviously, we can control the relief, right, of that canvas that we could see right here. And we can start to change uh, sort of the texture underneath basically is what we'd be doing, which is pretty darn amazing, right? We change that to a burlap. And again, I'll just do something drastic like that. We'll click okay. There we are, there's version one, command J. Let's jump it. Let's go back in there just for fun. Filter gallery. Uh, <laughs> my brain is not big. Honestly, if I, if I know this stuff, I'm sure you could learn it because I'm not the smartest person in the room. Unless I'm the only person in the room. That's the only time I'm the smartest person in the room. Okay, but here we have watercolor as well. Now, when you dive into these and you start experimenting, right? Uh, you have the ability to layer them one on top of the next. So right down here, watercolor is there. I can add, click, add another watercolor or like a smudge stick. So I can start to get uh, definitely different looks with one particular, um, you know, th through one pass, right? So there we go. Kind of making it more ugly. Right, I get it, and that's usually what happens. We're kind of losing detail. We're making it almost look a little bit less special. But let's click OK, because I'm just showing you these filters. Let's get on to something we actually would make, huh? Right? Let's actually do this real fast. In here, sneakily, I am looking for it. Adjustments. All right. Let's just rasterize this. Let's not rasterize this layer. Let's get rid of this filter gallery. I want to uh, do something else. Oil paint, it's under stylize. Okay, so let's go to filter. Let's actually convert this back to a smart object. We'll go to filter uh, right down here. Um, rather than going to the um, lovely filter gallery at the top, I think this one actually needs to be in the filter gallery. But down here, we'll go to stylize right in here. And here's oil paint, right? So selecting oil paint, right? We have this lovely. Let's focus on the eye. It's going to give you these lovely swirls, right? Which is just... Cool to do with a face. There's even more we can do with it as well. All right, Th Thoreau, we want you addicted to uh, watching and like learning. Honestly, I want you to wake up one day and just be like, I know so much. Uh, hopefully just because you had Adobe Live on, right? So again, obviously you could play with these controls all you want, right? If we want, I think what's cool about this is some of that, um, Kind of the bristle detail. See, notice how it's kind of following the curve of the uh, pixels, 
right? So it's definitely like aware of the pixels that it's manipulating, right? But again, I can make it look nice and swooshy. We'll click OK, and hopefully you can see this gorgeous like watercolor look, right? Don't, you're not gonna post this and be like, oh, I can paint. Nah, you can, you can select some options. Uh, All right, Mohammed, how did I get into Adobe Live? Are you asking me? Yeah. Well, I work for Adobe, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> We've been doing this for, I've been doing this for like six years now. So it's like a six year process. And I've been working at Adobe for tw 10 years and I've been in the industry for 25 just to kind of give you a little bit of a background. Okay, so this is fun. I think it gets really interesting when you start mixing some of these. Uh, Command J, let's do this one more time. Let's get rid of oil paint. Let's add uh, filter, going back into filter gallery, just because I kind of want to see um, what stylize, texture, some of these other options down here uh, will give us. But I think cutout might be really interesting. All right. Okay. Not quite what I wanted. Um, just so you know. But I'm seeing one in here that I could potentially use in a creative fashion, right? Um, I thought cutout was gonna do it. So this is what I was thinking. So I basically have this cutout look, right? I could actually use this cutout as just a selection method. So I'll click OK right there. Here we have this cutout. Now I can jump in and use something like the magic wand tool. Make sure contiguous is selected and click on say this part and this part right here. Click on certain parts of this and maybe even select a little bit more. So let's just go ahead and select this whole area, right? I could use this as a guide to select her face, right? So that's all. I'm just kind of wrapping around, following her lips up to her nose, up over, down, like so. So I could use this piece. Bam, there it is. We have part of that on her face. Right, but more importantly, I could use that selection. Okay, so we'll take this, we'll drag this. I don't know if many of you know this, but you do have this layer mask right here. So I could take that option key, click and drag, boop. I've just transferred it to this second layer. Just a huge tip, I think. Um, and then I can always invert that. Command I, I've inverted it. So what's this gonna look like? This is your little test, you know. Is it gonna show her left eye or remove it? All right, let's zoom out. Turn that off, turn that off. Uh, and you can see it is just, and actually let's just add a, let's just add something else to this. There we go. You can you can see essentially what we are cutting out in that particular case, like so. Yeah, it's okay. I get it, right? So we're just cutting out part of her face. This isn't even what I wanted to do. I want to do so much more than just this, to be honest with you. Uh, white reveals, black hides. Yeah, white reveals, black conceals, as some people say. You are right, Sig Brown. Give Sig some lotion from someplace a uh, uh, very pretty smelling lotion that's what you win uh yes i'll just run over and deliver it to myself just kidding all right yes definitely coffee i didn't ice coffee today so uh yeah this is okay so i kind of point out i show you all of this just to show you the different things that you can do from filter gallery clear down into the stylized right specifically oil paint 
right? We could do a lot of that work. We can uh, actually start to kind of paint on it ourselves. Now, when you're painting on a, um, a layer, let's just take that. Let's just get rid of, let's dismiss that. Let's trash that. Right, we could use different brushes as well. So some people will jump over here and they'll take, uh, say, a mixer brush tool uh, or history brush tool or art history brush tool. Uh, but we'll take the mixer brush tool currently set to a bunch of branches. And let's just reset this tool. So this is what it will look like. We can load this on with um, certain right over here let's check this by the way if you ever mess up your any of your uh, tools go to your options bar you can hit select reset tool and that will reset it but I can get into this um, uh, wet heavy mix right let's check my uh, foreground color is just gonna be this orange we'll go right in here make sure that layer is selected Right, and I'm starting to kind of smudge those pixels around as if they're wet. Okay, it's gonna look better if we take down or actually bring up the hardness, right? You'll start to see the manipulation a little bit better, right? So I, I'm coming in here and I'm just pushing around as if this is wet paint, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I can come in and make this look like an artistic portrait by pushing these pixels around. We're smudging pixels, guess what? We're not really painting, we're just smudging pixels on a photo, okay? Uh, this is again, this is this is not really This isn't this isn't painting. This is smudging, right? So that's all we're doing. We can make something look like a painting this way, right? Because you know, we're getting we're adding a lot of these brush strokes that we like, and it can look pretty good. So I don't mean to discourage you from using this. By all means, go ahead, right? But, uh, you know, people who actually, you know, paint. You know, on a blank canvas with this as a reference, uh, those people are pretty impressive. But again, we'll smudge this around. I'm going to take this to the next level. I could use Photoshop on the iPad, but I can also use Fresco. I, I'm looking up at, at chat, wondering if anybody was gonna mention fresco or anything like that. Ooh, we could take a Kyle oil brush, yes. That would be good too. This is just some of the stuff out of the box, by the way. Right, so again, we're kind of smudging these pixels like so. All these wonderful options, there we go. Smudge, smudge. I'm just using the mouse. I don't have a, uh, ugh. I don't have a nice big Wacom. Um, but, uh, honestly, I would probably consider getting an iPad if I was debating between a Wacom and an iPad, I'd probably do an iPad with Apple Pencil because I think I would just get more use out of it. The nice thing about the iPad is like, I'm not, I'm not confined to my desk. I kind of just get to work wherever and I feel like I work too much as it is. Smudge, smudge, smudge. Right? Ah, love, love this. Like, talk about gorgeous skin. This is like gorgeous skin. Okay. Yeah, Command J. Right up here. Also, we have, as was mentioned, other brushes. We can click in here. There's a number of brushes that you could easily um, access. Um, if you don't have this set up, show, make sure you're also showing the brush tip, right? So you can kind of see what the end looks like. So here's this pastel palooza. Here's wet media brushes from Kyle. Here's a, a wet blender. Here's Kyle's real oils, right? So let's take that and kind of compare it to Kyle's real oils. We can see up at the top has a lot of kind of similar options. The wet, the load, the amount of paint there, paint there is, how much it gets mixed. Let's actually go back to this original one command. J, ba, ba. 
And trust me, I'll show you Fresco in a second. What you can do there. All right, so let's take this load down to like 21. And right up here, load brush after each stroke. We don't want to do that. Cle uh, not don't don't I don't want either one of those pressed actually. But we could still go into say the wet heavy mix. 50-50, 100% mix, right? And now this is actually just a different brush stroke that we're using. Uh, looks a lot better, honestly, in my, in this case, right? As I start to smudge that around. Okay, you got it. We could use those, we'd use a mouse if you're lucky enough to have like, you know, I don't know, like an iPad or something, which is awesome. Uh, we can take a look at Fresco really fast because what I'm ultimately doing is trying to create something artistic uh, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, f which is better, Wacom or iPad, uh, if we're talking for beginners? Totally up to you. In my opinion, um, the learning curve for iPad and Apple Pencil is just much easier, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, the Huon is, is a lot cheaper <clears throat> as well, if you want to try that. Uh, all right, cool. Let's switch over to my iPad. Mop. Here we are. I happen to be in Fresco, so I'm going to launch that. I'm going to just load up that same photo really fast. Okay. There we are. Click done. Here it is. Let's duplicate this layer. Let's turn off that one. I like to keep a backup. And check this out. We want to go right over here and let me try to zoom in on the screen and move this up if I could. There we go, right over here. We want to convert this photo to a pixel layer, right? So I've converted it to a photo rather than it being locked down as a photo. I can now recognize all those pixels. At least Fresco can recognize all those pixels. Okay, with that done, right, we'll go zoom back out. You can see my mic right there. Does everybody see that, uh, that little, oops, that's moving me over. How embarrassing. All right, so right in here, I will select a watercolor wash soft. Why not? Okay, I'm gonna change, rather than having a color in here, I'm gonna change this to just transparent but I'm gonna make sure the water flow is set to 100%. So now it's a pixel-based layer. It's like has all these little paint dots everywhere. If I take a brush that has just water on it, I can come in and start to really blend this. Watch it up at the top, right? So we're just taking that and blending that like so. All right, there it is. Blending it at the top. If we want to, we can add a little bit of color. Let's just throw some white in there. Take the, yeah, let's throw some white in there. I can add a little bit of white to it if I want to, uh, and then take down the water, because that's ultimately what I'd want to do with the edges, is add a little bit more white down there, okay? But ultimately, you can see that it's treating this like, all those pixels as if they're like wet paint for these watercolors. So hopefully you're into that. I like it. Let's get a little bit more up here, right? Get rid of that white, zoop. Take that back down. Come in here to this detail, change it to the watercolor round detail. Make that transparent. And we can come in and say, hey, you know what? Here's, we're outlining, we're kind of, again, this just makes it wet paint and we can have some fun uh, with this. And always taking the flow down if we wanna get in and kinda of work on some more of those details. Okay, obviously behind my head a little bit are um, angle spacing, all the various details for that specific brush. I'm not gonna to get too close to the eye, right? But, I should've taken down the flow even more on that one. But obviously I'm just treating this like wet paint. Cool. 
That looks good. I know this is a Photoshop masterclass, and uh, I'm in Fresco, which hopefully that's okay, but the last thing I want to do is like withhold inf any information from you just because the title of the video says something else, right? So this is all about artistic portraits. Most of the time you're using uh, Photoshop. Uh, other times you might be using other tools like I'm doing here in Fresco. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I wanted to just show you that because I think that's a little trick that people just don't know about. I was into it. Uh, all right. Yes, the pencil tool, you too, the pencil, uh, Apple Pencil 2, you don't need a cable to charge. So it's just like right here, boop, and it charges. I kid you not, like, you're always going to be paranoid about losing your pencil. So I encourage you, if you do get an Apple uh, device, an iPad with Apple Pencil, you know, get one of these things. You just need a little sleeve for your pencil because when I throw it in my bag, it's going to get knocked off and then it's stuck. I don't know. It just has disappeared in some airport or something. All right, let's go back. Here we are. Uh, by the way, I would love to have a Wacom 24-inch HD. Like, I would love that. That would be so nice. Okay, let's take another look at this. I'm trying to do as many different versions of this as, as possible. Let's take this. Um, let's posterize it. Image adjustments. Oh, where's my brain? Oh yeah, posterize. It doesn't matter. I didn't really even need to go this way. But here's posterize, right? We could take this and we can kind of determine the levels of color to this, right? So kind of come in here, take that down to 11. Nine, eight, ooh, this is nice, this is nice. I'm thinking, oh, it'd be really cool if I can isolate some of these colors and then put different patterns in there. So let's get really artistic with this. Since I still have 30 minutes, this is great. I used posterize levels four. What this allows me to do is um, just helps me visualize and kind of block out the areas where I wanna have some fun patterns, okay? Click okay. Done. There it is. Kind of blocked out. Makes it easier for me to see. I'll add a new layer. I will go in with the pencil or pen, excuse me, the pen tool, and I can come in and start to highlight some of these various areas. Okay, let's go right up here to like the eyebrow, for instance. See, since I've posterized it, I can clearly see that area, right? I could use the pen tool if you're comfortable with the pen tool, right? You can go in and uh, honestly, I probably need to make this a little bit more transparent so it'd be easier for everybody to see. Uh, but I could use the pen tool and get like really exact. To be honest with you, I showed you some shortcuts earlier that is just applying filters, but Anything really cool ju is just gonna take more time, right? It's gonna mean jumping in here and adding this shape layer, right, by hand. I just made this shape layer. Notice up at the top, it's a shape layer. Fill color is currently black. Doesn't really matter. A lot of this I can change, but just kind of keep this in mind. Uh, a lot of times, uh, as I, as I kind of move on, by the way, let's kind of go to this eye. Start clicking around. And I wanna make this eye You know, let's get some eyelashes, take some creative liberties with this, like that. Notice how I'm kind of, part of this is getting covered up. Like I actually can't see uh, the eye. And basically this fill color is getting in the way. You can always even while you're working, go over to your layers panel and take the fill down. You can take it clear down to zero if you want to. Um, also right over here, I can start turning off all these other layers and maybe selecting this one. Maybe I want the fill of this layer to be down as well. So let's just go ahead and there we go. There we are going back to that layer that I'm working on. Oh, there's that lovely, you guys can probably hardly see it, right? This line, right? I'm trying to make this easy on your eyes and it's hard to see, okay? But we can go in here, 
select this line up at the top, make this easier for you to see. We'll change this thickness to three pixels. Uh, magenta should be okay, but I went ahead and just made it thicker. This is so much better now, right? P for pen, click, click. Welcome to my world, everybody. It's like, oh yeah, just adding Bezier points till you're blue in the face, right? But getting all those lovely lashes right in there. All right. Okay. Hello, Comic Sans. Comic Sans, can I just say, I love your name. It's super funny. I want to know who you really are. Tell me your name. Who is Comic Sans? Use your real name. It's okay. We, it's all right. What are you, what are you hiding from? Huh? What's the deal? What are you hiding from? We're all friends here. You could use your real name. Just like Cody Bear. Cody Bear's real name is Cody. Uh, middle name. Uh, it's actually her full name is Kodiak Bear, just so you know. But that's her actual name, just uh, FYI. Okay, so there we go. We have that outlined, right? I could obviously change that color because it is a shape layer called eye why not let's do the eyeball new layer bam let's get this going on pen tool i want to make this happen i want to move much faster i hope that's okay because you guys get how this works right you get it right let's switch the color to white what if we just did this the whole time as you just watch me use the bezier tool Oh man, that would be too much. All right. There we go, we have our lovely eye. Done. White of the eye. Uh, reflection, you get the idea. Taking, oh get it. You get the eye, dear. Uh, taking all these elements, uh, let's just group them together. We'll call them left eye and start blocking out other parts as well. Uh, cool. Uh, your comic sense is I'm Nor SH. Still not a full name. Still not a full name. I'm looking for real names here, people. Thank you. Wait. No, you're not. All right, cool. Anyway. Thank you for joining me. If you're joining me elsewhere, jump over to Behance, over to Behance.net. Uh, forward slash Adobe Live. Sorry, I've been ignoring other chat. I didn't mean to. Okay, so let's fast forward, by the way, because I've already done a lot of this work. So let's just turn on this layer where I have a number of these shapes like already created, and there's the eye, right? So we start to uh, develop this portrait, uh, as you can see. Let's, just, again, see them right over here. That's all I did is went in and started outlining things. I'm gonna show you some shortcuts with that, but first I need to do the right eye, so bear with me. Right, we'll do this hopefully as fast as possible, but again, anything worth doing it's gonna take some time, okay? Uh, for these little details, I will use the Bezier, I'll use the pen tool to kind of jump in and outline that perfect. You can always jump in, change the color if you pick the wrong or a color that you didn't want, right? Right up here and adjust the fill, right? And by the way, we could always make this a path layer and not a shape layer if we care to. <sighs> All right, Eric Sue finally got his chat to work. There's a man with a name. Eric Sue Good. 
Eric, it's good to see you. Always very positive. I really appreciate and love having you uh, in chat. So I'm glad it's working for you, my friend. For sure. Coming in here to do that. Right now we have that part. Let's make this inside white. Like so. There we are. I want to add to this current layer. Steve Festus Kasaboom is an overachiever with three names. You overachiever, you. Uh, all right, by the way, sometimes when you zoom in, I don't know if you guys like this photo, this, uh, this pixel grid. Just, do you guys like that pixel grid? I personally can't stand it. So um, if you go into preferences, general, let's turn that off and that might take me a second. Interface workspace. Now it's going to take me forever to find. Okay, so I'm going to move on. I'm not going to worry about it. By the way, I could always hide these extras. Command H could hide them. The issue is, is I actually need to be able to see my pen, right? Which I currently can't see right now. So Command H. Oh, there's my shape, right? Uh, nonetheless, let's just go back over here. Command H. Let's just hide that for now. Yeah, I got to be able to see it so it automatically turns it back on. Zip. Like so. I want to know who in here goes by their middle name or other name than their first name. I'm curious as who goes by their middle name or a nickname. There is Cody Bear. We know that. Full name is Kodiak Bear. Yeah, sometimes I like it, sometimes I hate it. I just don't need to get that exact usually. Welcome, Brandy. Good to have you back. Uh, also, just a little FYI on the schedule. We'll have uh, Jason Levine up next doing some video. Uh, that will be amazing. And it's all below me, as you can see. Big shout out to Jesus. Um, ooh, how to create ingest and proxy presets. I don't even know what that means. Create ingest? Whoa. It doesn't sound good. It sounds gross. You want to ingest it? <laughs> okay, so here we have this eye, as promised, command G, grouping it. We have a right eye. Let's get this party started. I want to move through this so fast, right? And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to kind of work the way I usually work. I need that big background color there, so let's jump in here. So again, all these shapes, this is the shape of the face. All of these are created using the pen tool, and sometimes I would use uh, the paintbrush, by the way, okay? So right in here, just to show you that, let's say for instance right in here, I wanna get this brown. So I'll just hit I just to sample that color. We'll hit B for brush. Uh, I'm gonna make sure, um, in fact, I can come over here, I can reset this tool. I wanna make sure the hardness is set to 100, maybe increase the um, brush size, but let's come in here and I'll just start painting, by the way, so, right? So rather than using the pen tool, uh, I'm gonna use the brush, the paint brush. Coming in here, we're gonna make that like so. Don't worry, it's gonna be behind all that stuff, so I just need to get this part right here, okay? Down there, right in here, kind of paint that like so, right? Decrease the size, do something like that, okay? So that's all I'm doing in this case, because I want this just to be nice, just a nice shape but I want it to be crisp and I actually want it to be a shape layer, right? So how do you convert a pixel-based layer, something actually was painted, to uh, be a shape layer, okay? So this is how you do it. Take this brush layer right here, right? We have that. Hold down the Command key, click on that layer. It's gonna select your pixels. Go up to Path right up here. And right down here, we wanna create this in the paths panel, make a work path from selection. Bam, there it is. Just made that work path from selection. So it made this into a path. It's just a working path. It's not a shape layer yet. And this is the tricky part because you're like, ah, oh, how do I, you know, like, how do I make it into a shape layer like these guys? I want them to be a shape layer like those. Okay, how do I do that? Well, right down here, 
uh, kind of honestly unintuitive, <laughs> to be honest with you. Let's select that path, right? With that path selected, we'll go down. Hold on one second. Come on, buddy, do me right. Solid color. All you, your last step is just selecting solid color because you want it to be a shape layer. Click OK. And now we've gone from pixel based to uh, vector based uh, graphic, right? Just by selecting, converting it to a path, and then converting that path to a shape layer by selecting new solid is what you're doing. So I don't know if anybody needed that tip, but now you have it. And now what was once a brush stroke, we now have these lovely lines that we can go in and manipulate accordingly, right? Kind of tweak this into place because I want this to be maybe a little sharper. Give me that nice point down there. Come on, buddy. There it is, just like that. Cool, cool. All right, zoom out. I'd wanna clean this up, so much cleaning I need to do, but that's okay, right? I have this shape layer right here, move these. This is why I like this. Uh, I'm waiting, uh, add layer, uh, what, do you, what do you say, Sig? Add layer, then properties, and make shape from path. Uh, yeah, maybe in the, uh, the properties panel. It might be in there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I will. T I will take your word for it. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, seems a little bit like the blob, blob brush in Illustrator uh, that can make shapes. Uh, exactly right. So, yes, um, you can of course use Illustrator to do a lot of this. Like, it really doesn't matter. I'm not going to because hey, you know what? This is. Label the Photoshop stream, right? And honestly, the tools don't matter. It's all going to be the same. It's like pen tool, pen tool, right? Most of my work is done here in Photoshop, so that's why I'm using it. All right. Oh, there we go. Come on, buddy. There you are. Just kind of covering some of that up. And let's do this one more time. New layer. This is what I love. I use this to the freeform pen tool. Uh, the name is kind of deceiving, but basically it's the pencil. It's like a vector pencil tool, right? It works like the pencil tool in Illustrator. So selecting the freeform pen tool, because really I want to outline the whole face. Uh, just have that layer selected. Let's just sample. Something a little lighter like that. Freeform pen tool. I, oh no, I stopped. What are you doing? I gotta move the canvas, or move the document, and in view, drawing it around, pop, like that. There we go, we kind of filled that in. Uh, you get the idea. Oh man. This is looking, this part's looking rough, isn't it? So again, this is a case where I do exactly what I did before, properties, excuse me, paths, turn it into a working path, go down here, make that a solid color. Uh, let's undo that. Make that a solid color, bop, and then make sure it's that correct color. Now I have all those lovely Bezier points that I can manipulate accordingly. This is just bad. Some of these. Mm. Right? Let's turn that off. Or throw it away. All right. 
I'm sorry for ignoring chat. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for ignoring chat. I'm trying to make this awesome. Because I want it to be awesome. Let's move this over. Have this follow the curve of the nose. All right, let's have some fun now. I have 15 minutes. Let's play with the hair in the background. And because it's fastest, freeform pen tool. You want to see something else that's just crazy? Uh, uh, okay, Mallory, you, you're better in Illustrator, but you're dying to be better in Photoshop on so many things. So we could talk about those differences like all day long. I would love to, all right? Um, let's just kind of outline the hair real fast. Uh, I wanted to do this. Let's just increase this. And uh, let me show you something really interesting with the freeform pen tool. Okay, all of you, a lot of you are aware of uh, the magnetic lasso tool. Well, imagine if you had the magnetic lasso tool, but it was vector based, because that's essentially what we have as an option for the freeform pen tool. So, zooming back out, here's my freeform pen tool, selecting it right up here at the top, magnetic. Right? So this is going to automatically attach itself to pixels based on the contrast. So I'm going to outline the whole hair. Sorry, I'm going to be starting kind of, well, I'll start up here at the top. This is going to get ugly, but let's go in here. As I click and drag, I'm just dragging and it's starting to hug uh, those pixels based on the contrast. Right, and I can start to move this in and out to kind of grab more, more pixels or less pixels, just kind of determine uh, what I'm grabbing. But that's what I'm doing, is I'm, I'm actually creating a vector version of basically the magnetic lasso tool, but ultimately I'm creating a vector bop, shape, as we can see, right? Here it is, ba bow, ba, there it is. There's the face. Definitely need the ear, I need the shoulder, I need so many different parts, but uh, uh, again, it's kind of cool, okay? Uh, if you're not crazy about it, like you can always jump in. Watch when I click on it. Look at all these points, whoa. Hey, if at any time you do something that you're not particularly fond of in Photoshop when it comes to vector, vector you can take that content, you can copy it, you can bring it into Illustrator, like I actually did with this shape, by the way. Paste it in as a compound shape, fully editable. Here it is, pop, zoom out, there it is. There's my shape, that's the hair. I just did a copy and paste, that's all I did. But from there I could do some of the cleanup stuff that Illustrator can do, because let's be honest, when it comes to vector, Illustrator wins, right? In this case, we can jump in and just, hey, you know what, let's just simplify this path, right? We can just simplify it and we'll just use it for this simplification process, taking that down to 107 points just like that, okay? So there it is in Illustrator, kind of smoothed it out a little bit more, right? I can add any adjustments that I want, clean it up all I want, you guys get the idea, okay? I can redraw, let's hit N, redraw it, pop, beautiful, right? Copy it. Now when we paste it back in, we'll paste it back as a shape layer, because that's ultimately what I want. There it is, back as our shape layer black color, move that over, and uh, then I can have a different background color as well. All right. And by the way, don't worry, it's always gonna be editable as I kind of move these lines down, these points. How's everybody doing today? What's going on, huh? Uh, I'm not, I think this portrait needs so much work. It really does. Oh, I should have, just needs more work, huh? It does. It just needs more work. Not to worry, we can have some fun with this. 
We have the right eye, left eye. Those look good. All right. Cool. Wait for it. Tell when I'm concentrating because I will get quiet. Okay. Okay, so what I essentially did is I, I did some color blocking, okay? Uh, the layer organization is making excellence. I don't have time to, I don't have to name all this stuff. Like this is basically the face. There you go, does that make you feel better? I get it, I don't know what anything is either. It's fine. Uh, Cause I don't have much time. I wanna, I wanna dive into this and I wanna do a number of things. Let's just do a J. Let's bring this up like that. What is that piece? Okay, it's that side of the face. Can we posterize it? What does that look like? Do we just throw a gradient over the top? Wait for it, guys. Wait for it. Uh, let's just do that. Okay, there we are. Let's just change this blend mode. And we're just going to see what happens. I hope that's okay. I'm just going to see what happens with some of this. And ultimately, I'm trying to determine which parts are which. We're adding a little bit of color, right? And we start shifting things around as well. Okay, so there's that black. All right? There's that side of the face. All right? Change that to a darken of some sort. Cool. I feel like you guys are gonna think this is really ugly, and you know what, you would be right. <sighs> because it needs to be tightened up a lot. Okay, ultimately what I was gonna do is start to fill in some of these areas that I've blocked out with certain patterns. Uh, and just to make it easier, um, let's take most of these whites, let's take these two shape layers and we can merge those shapes down. Boom, merge them, like so. So that's what we have there. As part of that, uh, we can throw a gradient on it if we want to, or we can start to add some checkered patterns or something interesting, right? So that's what I actually was considered about doing. Like, let's take some patterns, right? And let's use these patterns in a fun way. So give me a second, let's select uh, any one of these, sorry, option, click, there we go. Command click, there we are, selected it. Uh, let's convert this to a pattern, edit. Turn your head. Maybe I'd probably size this up. Image, edit, define pattern. There we are, bam, let's make this a pattern. Dashed, there we are. Let's go to our patterns. I think this is gonna be really awesome once this is done, but I don't know if everybody's catching a vision for it just yet. Uh, here's some of the patterns I already have made. Let's put this off to the side, right in there. Okay, there it is, my dashed pattern. I don't wanna add it to that layer. Let's go ahead and make it part of that white. So there it is, we'll click like so, and we've added that to it. So this is what we could do for a lot of these. As soon as I make all these patterns, by the way, there's this one, right? Uh, something new in Photoshop in this latest release is I can go ahead and, uh, and adjust the angle, like so. Click OK. I wanna make this darker or use a different pattern, I would add a color overlay, right? So we could throw a color low overlay over that, make it, uh, whether it's a different color or whatever, but we definitely wanna change uh, the blend mode. So there we are, just making that look a little bit darker. This is gonna be really cool once it's done. 
I'm super excited about it, right? Again, using these kind of fun retro patterns, okay? Cool thing is we could also turn these into brushes. So that's where the final details come in as I start to paint with these uh, various patterns as well, okay? Let's open that up, click right there, edit. By the way, sometimes if pattern isn't highlighted, it means that you have some transparency in there. So there's some transparency on the edge, which is why I'm bringing that in just one pixel. And now pattern is available. So the reason it's not selectable is because you have some transparency in there. And now we have dashed to whatever. You get the idea, okay? Zoom out, get rid of those, run out of time per usual, right? Taking this whole area too, right? Let's just apply that pattern to it, right? You guys start to kind of see a vision for what I'm going for. Uh, yeah, so you got the idea. Even for these, that's what I was doing, just doing some color blocking. But now I can go in and add, say this one here, right? So you guys starting to see what I'm going for, right? Uh, and again, we can always add a color overlay if I just want this to be darker, but the same pattern, right? So I still kind of want it to match up, right? Like that, but I also want to rotate it, like again, maybe the direction of her face in that case, like that, okay? Still needs a lot of work, please forgive me. It is not good, but you know who is good? It's Jason Levine and he's up right now. Really appreciate him and I appreciate you guys. Take care and uh, follow me on Instagram for where it ends up. So thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. Thanks, everybody. Bye.